Hi, Jaspreet. How are you? Hi, Rakesh. I'm good. How are you? I'm good too. Thank you for asking. Right. So, uh, thank you so much for joining us uh, today on this uh, YouTube channel for the mock interview. Right. So, can you tell us something about yourself? Yes, sure. As you know, my name is Jaspreet Kaur and I belong to Bareilly. And I've completed my B.Tech from Hindustan College of Science and Technology, Agra. And if you talk about my uh, experience, I'm having 2.5 year of experience in automation testing as well as in manual testing at CoForge. And if you talk about my roles and responsibility, so firstly, we gather the information from BA or from some responsible person. After that, we are creating the test cases. And I was responsible for automating the test cases by using Java Selenium. And for storing the test cases, we are using GitHub. And uh, for build management uh, and project management, we are using Maven. And uh, for test case executions, we are using Jenkins. And for any defect logging and tracking, we are using Jira. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are following uh, Agile methodology. Yeah. Okay. That's all about me. Great, great. So how many test cases do you automate every day? Around uh, based on the requirement. So approximately in a day we automate uh, uh, two to three test cases mm -hmm. right so your answer was good that it is based on the requirements based on what kind of test cases what kind of complexity they are sometimes two to three can be automated sometimes even it takes a day to automate a single test case yeah single test case also. sometimes it takes the entire day or two days for deciding the approach or strategy also so it depends right do you use aws in testing no no you don't use aws so how do you trigger your automation your frame this uh, huh. for automation uh, scripts we are using the jenkins ci cd pipeline mm -hmm. uh, for automating our uh, trick the test script we are using mm -hmm. so for that uh, we are using the jenkins mm -hmm. so can you tell me the command to run the jenkins job from the terminal I know how to create a job, uh, but job. I don't know uh -huh. sure about the command. Okay, okay. No worries. So uh, you can run the Jenkins job through command line also. So I'll, I'll uh, tell you what kind of command that you have to tell. Yeah, so... Is my screen visible? Oh, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. Now, now is it visible? Yeah, it's loading. Yeah. It's visible. Yeah. yeah. So you can run the Jenkins.var using the following command, right? This is the command line that you will have to just mention and it will trigger the it will at least okay. boot the Jenkins and then you can enter the job number. Okay. So okay. Now you are you are using Maven, right? Yes. So can you tell me the command to run a Maven job from the from the terminal? Command run operation. Yeah. Okay, okay. So let this be an open question for the people who are watching this video. What is the command to run a Maven job from the terminal? Now you are using automation, you are doing automation. So which version control tool you are using? GitHub. GitHub. Okay. So can you tell me a few of the git commands that you are using? Yeah. So uh, command should be git init command. We are using to in like whenever we want any repository to yeah. initialize any repository, we are using git init command. And uh, whenever our changes is completed and you want to put our changes, so we'll use git commit command. Mm. And we uh, also use git clone command uh, mm. whenever we want a local copy of the repository to mm. work, the, uh, to done, like to perform the changes uh, without impacting other things. Mm. So we use git clone command to, that will create a local copy of the repository. Uh, git stash command we are using, uh, mm. git stash command we are using uh, that will uh, takes the current working uh, repository state and puts it on a stack and mm. uh, provide us a clean working directory. So git stash command we are using. Mm. Apart from that, the basic commands, the git pull, pull command and the push commands for the code push and pull. 
Right, right. Are you aware about git rebase command? I yeah, I have like know about it, like not mm -hmm. deeply, but yeah, git rebase command we also have one git rebase. Yes, yes. Would you like to recall? Did you use that command or would you like to give a try for that question for this question? Like when we are not using commit, hmm. then we use git rebase command. When we are not using commit, I commit. it's the Go replacement on. of something. I don't recall yeah. for which hmm. thing we are using. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Please don't put that much pressure on your head. This is a mock interview. But in the real yeah. time interview, you would be getting such kind of questions, right? See, git rebase. And then in the square bracket, you can put branch. So this, this is one of the command which will apply any commits of current branch ahead of the specified one, right? So there are two yeah. commands that you use in the git to rewrite the history. When mm -hmm. I say rewrite history means you are rewriting the branches, you are updating commits, you are clearing the history, right? So one is git rebase and in the square bracket branch that will apply any commit of current branch ahead of the specified one and then git reset, git reset and then uh, you put uh, dash hard commit. So it will clear the staging area. It will rewrite working tree from the specified commit, mm -hmm. right? So these things it will do. Okay. So you mentioned about uh, git clone, git merge, okay, git, git checkout, yeah. yeah, git stash. Git. Okay, what is git diff command used for? Yeah, git diff command is used whenever we have done any changes and we want to see the difference of where we have done the changes. Hmm. So to see the changes in the files, we use git diff command. Uh -huh. So git diff, so difference of what is changed, but it is not staged. That is the difference. Okay. Uh, then there is one more command, git diff dash staged. What does that mean? So what is the difference between git diff and git diff dash staged? If I know, like, we just need to differentiate between the changes on git dev stage, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Right. So, see, git diff is different of what is, difference of what is changed, but what is not staged, right? Mm -hmm. Git diff staged is difference of what is staged, but it is not yet committed. Simple. Okay. Easy to understand. Now you can correlate. One is traveling from this particular, second is parallel to that, but different stages. Right. So you can it will show the stage. Okay. Uh -huh. So you can remember in this manner and it will help you to keep things remember for longer run of time. Right. So this thing is fine. Now, what is the difference between epic and story? Okay. So epic, oh, we can say it is the main task. For example, uh, and uh, epic is the main task and so story is the subtask, we can say. Hmm. So Epic, for example, suppose we need to develop a, a Flipkart application. So that will are Epic, the main story of where we need to develop a Flipkart application. And the user story and story are the subtasks. We need to develop a function login functionality or a, a payment page. So these are the user stories. Mm -hmm. And Epic is the main task and uh, story is the subtask. Mm -hmm. Right, story is a subtask. Epic is epic. Okay, right. So epic, as you know, uh, you know, Mahabharata is an epic. And then there are several chapters. So those are user stories. Yeah. Epic is broken down into multiple user stories so that team can focus on uh, small, small tasks. Yes, sprint-wise, we can yeah. work on the user stories. Correct, correct. So that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, can you write a Java program to remove duplicate numbers from an array? Any array you can take and you are comfortable with Java, right? Yes. Yeah, I'm giving you screen sharing rights. You just have to click on that uh, share screen green button and you can open Notepad++, IntelliJ, ID, anything that you are comfortable with.
So you want me to send you the input and output? See, I have sent you the input and output in the chat box. So input is this array. It has got five elements. Size of this array is five. One, one, two, 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 right? Output should be one and two only to remove the duplicate.
I'm not recording actually. Yeah, yeah, no worries, no worries. So, uh, let me show you the solution. Then uh, you will get an idea if this question is asked to you in a real time. Then how can you answer this? Yeah. So we have to write the Java program to remove duplicate elements, right? So first of all, what we will do is we will have this condition, right? So these are two variables that we are declaring. One is the integer a array, right? And then one is the integer n. Now what we are trying to, so one simple thing is that we will be using third variable, temporary variable for the time being, right? We are just creating another array for only storing the unique elements first. Mm -hmm. right? So first we will run the for loop and we will increment those things in the for loop one by one, right? Then we will change the original array and then the second for loop. So two for loops you will be using, right? And then once you get all those uh, things, the logic is built, then you can start with your main program, right? So you cannot start with the main program directly until unless you have some other things available, right? So before that, we will have to run two for loops to process the arrays, right? You will, you will have to uh, use the third temp temporary variable, any other variable that you can use where you can store those unique elements. And then you will remove the duplicate ones, right? After taking the length of the array, right? This is one of the approaches. There are other approach also. You can also use collections, right? So in an interview, if you will tell them this ap approach, then the next question would be, how can you achieve this using collections? If you will use collections while writing the program as a solution, then we will ask you, the interviewer will ask you, which is the other approach, right? So this kind of questions will be asked in case of Java programs, but one of the approach should be fine with you. One of the approach, at least you should be able to, you know, write independently. You should be able to, clearly explain them with full confidence. So they can also know, okay, she's having good knowledge in code Java. Rest Selenium, even if she's not having knowledge, she can ramp it up quickly, somewhat like that, okay? Okay, so this was just one of the program. Now, what do you know about collections? Yeah, so collections is a framework in Java. So it is a, uh, like in this collections, we are having a, set of predefined interfaces and the classes uh, that will help the programmer to perform the database operations like sorting, searching uh, easily. So it's a collection of predefined interfaces and classes. So collection is basically an interface and within that we are having several predefined interfaces and classes like uh, list, set, mm -hmm. uh, and within list we are having several classes, array list, link list, and within set we are having different classes, hash set, Mm -hmm. and all these things comes under collections right right which are the uh, which are the various interfaces that are used in the java collections framework a uh, list we are using a uh, list set a uh, queue mm -hmm. these are the interfaces right so there are six interfaces one is list set queue these three you mentioned it correctly then apart from that there is map interface collection interface, DQ interface. Now collection interface has been implemented by list and set classes, right? Yes. So those things are there. Okay, what is an array list? Yeah, so basically array list is a class that implements list interface and it works on indexing and it contains homogeneous type of data and we can store the data dynamically uh, in array list. It works on indexing and it, so by default, this memory is 10. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, okay. Um, let's say you are automating a web page and in that web page, you have a bootstrap dropdown. So how will you automate that particular dropdown? You are it's aware of drop. bootstrap. Yeah, sorry, can you please come on? Go here. Yeah, so for drop down, uh, we are having a select class. So with that, the help of select class, uh, we can uh, select the drop down values 
mm. and you can automate that like select by visible text select by text select by uh, name so in with this uh, we can uh, check the select the values in the drop down mm. okay now what if the xpath or the css changes right you can also select the values directly using xpath and css that is correct right but do you think that approach is recommended it's a bootstrap drop down right you are aware about bootstrap drop down right okay okay no worries so let me show you what kind of drop down is bootstrap drop down Yeah, the screen is visible, right? Yeah. Hmm? So this is an example of bootstrap dropdown, right? Now, in order to handle this kind of dropdown, you will have to use find elements method. You are aware about find elements? Hmm? Yes. And then you can run a for loop to get the specified elements. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. Okay. So with so, the help of like uh, uh, select class, uh, we can select uh, in this now. Yeah, select class if you want to use that also you can use, no harm with that. But actually there are multiple uh, values in that drop down menu, right? Okay. Yeah, and select will work in the drop down, in the normal drop down, right? It with might not work down. with this bootstrap, but still you can try, right? What happens and then you can just see, okay? Okay, now I was telling you about that uh, solution, find elements right why don't we go for find element what is the difference between find element and find elements basically the difference is the find element or uh, it just to gives the first appearance of the web element that matches with our locator so right. find elements it return a single web element and if no element is found it will return a no as a no element except no, no such element exception hmm. and uh, the find by elements, so it will help us to return a list of our web elements. And if uh, no element is there in the list, it will return an empty list. And its return type is a list. And the return type for uh, find element is web element. Mm -hmm. What is sonar cube? Have you heard about those that term sonar cube? No? Okay, okay. So uh, sonar cube is nothing but it's a tool. It's again an open source platform, right? It is uh, used for continuous inspection of code quality. What kind of what is the quality of the code that has been used? And it is used for automatic reviews, kind of a thing with static analysis of code, right? Maybe some mistakes obvious mistakes are there in the code so that tool can help you out to detect code uh you know problems problems within the code right so that is the how can we implement that uh, tool hmm. within our yeah so it, it can be yeah so it can be integrated with the maven and then Redel is there even now it is available with uh, continuous integration tools like you are using jenkins or Atlassian Bamboo. So even with those tools also, you can integrate. And whenever your uh, job you will create, you will run trigger that job. So the Sonar Cube will also run. And if someone would have checked in his or her code with some smells in their code, with some buggy thing in their code, so Sonar Cube report will also be generated. So that can be integrated with the CI tools. Okay. Fine. So, uh, Jaspreet, I'm done with the interview. Right? Almost all the questions we have covered. We have covered first um, Java-related questions, collections, then Java programming, then Selenium, right? Um, manual testing, I didn't ask much because your resume has automation. 
Jenkins related questions, command line git, we discussed. So definitely you will have 80% of automation questions in your interviews, 20% of manual, right? And you should be comfortable with that because automation is in demand and it's there in your resume. So definitely it will help you if these kind of questions you are able to answer with confident, right? Okay. So thank you so much, Jaspreet, for connecting with us tonight, right? And wish you all the best for your career ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you.